The gut is having a moment, and here are nine reasons why. I'm Dr. Robin Chutkan, gastroenterologist, microbiome expert, and author, and I am here to help you find gut bliss. On today's show, I've curated a list of nine important things your digestive system does every day that I want you to know about. Number one, it is the engine for your entire body. Just take a look down at where your GI tract is located. It's in the center of your body. It literally feeds your brain, your lungs, your immune system, your heart, your kidneys, If your gut health is not optimized, it means that even if you're eating a super healthy diet, those nutrients are not going to be properly digested and absorbed. So gut health is key to overall health. That's the first thing I want you to know. Number two, the vast majority of your immune system is physically located in your GI tract. You have your trillions of microbes in this hollow tube called your digestive tract, and they are separated from your immune system by your gut lining. And that lining is a one-cell thick membrane that provides a physical barrier between what is in your GI tract and what is in the inside of your body on the other side of that gut lining. And one of the most important things on the other side of that gut lining is your immune system. The cells that make antibodies and cytokines and all the different things your immune system produces to defend you against not just infection, but also against cancer. Those things are on the other side of your gut lining. So you have this hand and glove relationship where you have your gut microbiome on one side and your immune system on the other, and they are in constant communication. Number three. Your GI tract has its own nervous system called the enteric nervous system. And this is sometimes referred to as a second brain in your gut. And that second brain is intimately connected to your other brain, your central nervous system. And just like with your immune system, there is constant back and forth between the two organs. Your gut sends messages to your brain and your brain sends messages to your gut. What kinds of messages? Well, the signals from your brain impact things like absorption of nutrients, motility, and enzyme secretion in the digestive tract. And the signals from your gut to your brain influence your mood, your cognition, your memory. And this isn't just a chemical or hormonal communication. There is literally a physical conduit between the two organs through the vagus nerve that originates in the base of your brain And it runs all the way down through your neck and chest into your abdomen, where it branches out to your stomach, your small intestines, your liver, your pancreas. This connection plays a critical role in maintaining digestive health, in regulating your mood, and influencing your overall well-being. When we come back, what you need to know about that icky, sticky stuff that is one of your body's most important protective mechanisms and is located in your gut. The Gut Bliss Podcast is brought to you by VizBiome, my first and quite frankly, my only choice for a probiotic. Whether you're dealing with irritable bowel syndrome or just looking to restore your gut health, VizBiome can help. It's a medical food for the dietary management of IBS and gut inflammation. Backed by science and clinically vetted by thousands of my own patients. Find your gut bliss with VizBiome. Go to visbiome.com backslash gut bliss and use discount code gut bliss at checkout. Number four, that icky sticky stuff that is one of your body's most important protective mechanisms is mucus, a substance that's a cross between jello and glue, and it lines the internal surfaces of your nose, lungs, and intestines, which are in contact with the outside world, and it helps to keep them moist and healthy. But mucus plays a much bigger role than just a lubricant. One of its most important functions is to protect you from infections. How does it do that? Microscopic bristles in mucus trap viruses and bacteria, which then get coughed or snorted out or swallowed where they're inactivated by stomach acid. 
When you think about mucus, you probably think about your respiratory tract, your lungs, and your airway. But it's actually your digestive tract, not your lungs, where most of the 1.5 liters a day of mucus that your body makes are made. The mucus is made by cells in your gut called goblet cells. And pathogens like bacteria and viruses have to penetrate this overlying mucus layer to gain access to the cells that they're trying to infect, which are located underneath the mucus layer. To put it in perspective for you, the protective barrier that mucus provides is about 5,000 times the diameter of a virus like polio. And the analogy would be a human being wading through 150 gel-filled football fields to reach the end zone and score a touchdown. Very challenging. I also want to point out that your stomach produces hydrochloric acid that is strong enough to burn through your skin. And it's that thick layer of mucus in your stomach that protects a delicate lining from this powerful acid. Number five, and this one is a quick fact. You have about 22,000 human genes in your body and between 4 and 8 million microbial genes. Those microbial genes are not just passive passengers that travel along with their microbes. They play a critical role in your health. They influence everything from digestion and nutrient absorption to training and regulating your immune system. Number six, the total surface area of your digestive tract is about the size of a studio apartment, around 400 to 500 square feet. Now, if you live in New York City, that could be a two-bedroom apartment. But in Washington, D.C., that's probably a studio. Since your GI tract is only about 30 feet long, how do you end up with so much square footage? This much larger surface area is because of large folds in your GI tract called plica, circularis, and also villi, those finger-like projections, which are designed to increase the surface area for absorption so that you end up with a much larger area through which nutrients can be absorbed. Coming up, what your GI tract reveals about your risk for serious infection. Number seven, the number one predictor of severity after you were exposed to a viral illness like COVID is not your age or whether you have heart disease or lung disease or are overweight. It is the composition of your gut microbiome. A landmark study published in 2021 in the journal Gut found that the amounts of bad bacteria like Enterococcus faecalis versus the levels of good bacteria, like Fecalobacterium prasnitzii, could predict outcome from COVID with 92% accuracy, literally the most accurate predictor, by far. And by predict severity, I mean that it can tell us whether you're going to have mild symptoms, severe symptoms, end upon a ventilator, or are at high risk of dying from COVID. Number eight. There is no doubt in my mind that we are going to look back a couple decades from now and shake our heads in disbelief at the amount of gallbladders, appendixes, and uteruses that have been surgically removed for, quite frankly, no good reason. While these organs can develop problems like gallstones, inflammation, and fibroids in the uterus, that doesn't mean the solution is to take them out. If you had a sprained ankle, I wouldn't recommend an amputation. I tell you to stay off your ankle, and I would probably suggest things like rest, ice, and elevation. So too, the majority of problems that develop in these organs can be successfully treated non-surgically. A low-fat diet can resolve a lot of gallstone issues. Antibiotics will successfully treat most cases of appendicitis, and fibroids can usually be treated with hormonal therapy instead of surgical removal. And I want you to remember that the motivation behind this more aggressive surgical approach is not always better outcomes. It is often commerce. So you need to keep that in mind if that is what is being recommended. And number nine, the sleep hormone melatonin is made from the precursor hormone serotonin. And that's a neurotransmitter that is synthesized in your digestive tract by gut bacteria. And you've probably heard of serotonin being referred to as the feel-good hormone. 
So if your gut microbiome is off, it means that not only is serotonin production affected, which can affect your mood and your brain function, but your sleep is also likely to be disrupted. I want to leave you with three takeaways about your GI tract. Number one, it is the engine for your entire body, and literally all your organs depend on proper digestion and proper nutrient absorption for their fuel. Number two, it is closely linked to other essential organs like your brain and your immune system, and their function is highly dependent on having a healthy gut. And number three, the most important tool in your toolbox for optimizing your gut function is your fork. Food is medicine, especially when it comes to gut health. So that's it for this episode of the Gut Bliss podcast on nine things you need to know about your gut. We did it. We completed an entire season, 52 episodes of the Gut Bliss podcast. And we did it together. There is literally no podcast without a podcast audience. So thank you so much for listening. And I want to give a special thank you to my wonderful editor, Mike Goller, and my amazing web developer, Joey Carbet. You are truly the best, and I am so grateful to both of you. You are not only experts at what you do, but you are so kind and patient with me. I so appreciate you. So what is in store for season two? So many exciting things, including the transition to video that I talked about last week and confessed that I'm both terrified and excited about. We're going to have more guests, including some really generous people who are going to be sharing their digestive health journey, as well as some amazing experts with information we all need to know about. If you are interested in being a patient guest on the Gutless podcast, please use the contact form at gutbliss.com. I would love to hear from you. Go to gutbliss.com for my free seven-day microbiome reboot course. If you like what you're hearing, drop a review and hit that subscribe button. And remember, dirt, sweat, vegetables, the best prescription for a healthy gut. The information presented in this show is not meant to be medical advice. Consult your doctor before making any decisions about your health. The patients discussed are real people, but names and identifying features have been changed to protect their privacy.